require the signature of an authorized onboard alien. He's just walking by your place and you just said, come on in and have sex? I wasn't just molested, I was abused very badly. Congratulations. You are about to watch the award-winning talk soup hosted by a man named Kinnear, Greg Kinnear. Oh, yeah. It's the white water of talk shows, folks. Looking at highlights of all of them, or at least the ones that matter. Coming up, a skinny dipper is dragged into the police station with absolutely nothing on. Plus, Shirley asks her single audience members to make out with their hands for about 10 seconds. First up, though, sure, you've got fire, theft, collision, earthquake, every other type of insurance imaginable, but what, what are you really protected by? Imagine your dismay when a UFO beams you aboard and hauls you off to some alien, intergalactic other world. As Mo Gaffney learned, you can now protect yourself against this unfortunate eventuality as well. How do you prove you've been abducted? Well, every policy comes with a claim form. It asks information about the aliens. It asks information about the abductee, whether or not uh, they're a frequent flyer, their year-to-date <laughs> mileage. Uh, it asks information about the aliens themselves, the type of what spacecraft. What they look like. Yeah, you know, if they're type A personalities, type B, or some other type. Right. Uh, if you can get a tag number of the UFO, that's helpful. A tag that's, number? That's, that's good. Do you have like a little register that... We do on the claim form that you just fill that right in and that, that supports your claim. And don't you have to get your, your claim signed by someone? Well, the most important thing is we require the signature of an authorized onboard alien. Okay. <laughs> It can't, it can't be somebody just working in the galley. Okay? It's got to be like the captain of the ship. Like the Captain Kirk of the ship. Right. And if you have that, then we'll pay you. And the policy is What for, does the policy pay? It's a $10 million policy with $20 million double indemnity should there be extenuating circumstances. What would be an extenuating circumstance? Uh, if the aliens refuse to practice safe sex. <laughs> no. You don't know where these beings have been. God but. knows. You really don't know where they've been. Or <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Highlight of the Mo Gaffney show there. The man went on to say, actually, these space alien abductions are not really that bad, and the flight isn't supposed to be half bad. They have good food. If you're traveling eastbound through Orion, they got a couple of movies they're showing right now. I believe they've got in the name of the warp drive playing right now, Jurassic Planet. Of course, you can check out Mrs. Doubtstar, which is very big. And we have footage. This is a big one. Jackie Stallone Eats the Earth People is playing all this week, I guess. And that, oh my God! Chug a lug, chug a lug. On this Friday show, Mo meets an ex-Dallas Cowboy cheerleader who says she's happy to be out of her skin-tight uniform for once, for all, and forever. What is the rating on Jackie Stallone Eats the Earth People? No rating yet. NR. Let me preface this next remark by pointing out I'm no marriage counselor or have no degree in psychotherapy. I flunked psychology in high school, but who cares as the host of Talk Soup? I feel that I have developed some profound insights into the workings of the human mind that allow me to make the kinds of suggestions I'm about to make. For one, the guests from the Bertice Berry show, I suggest you listen up. If you don't get along with your mother-in-law, move out of her house. There was something yeah. about the wedding dress, too. What happened there? Well, I wanted to wear a different dress, and like, she didn't like it. Like, you wanted to wear a black it. and white and, dress? Yeah, and she didn't What like black it. and white dress? Yeah, we, and I didn't have the money to get it, that Robin. That was a rental place. I tried the black and white dress on. I didn't have the money to rent it. Well, you cleaned the other one for the same price, though. I, it cost more. No, it did not. It cost $40. That's how much it was to rent the dress. So you said she was trying to run your wedding by telling you what to wear? I thought she took it yeah. over. You I thought that was everything. Yeah. No, my sister I got to do what I want with What did she pitch in? Chad, do you she ever get a word in the decoration? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It, how do you feel when they start doing this at home? I leave. <laughs> <laughs> Can't leave no matter if we're not fighting. Yeah. 
Because I feel she treats us like brother and sister. Yeah, we don't have does. a marriage no more. We're on the verge of divorce. Uh, we don't even have, like I was telling her, we don't even have a sex life anymore. You know, I'm 19, he's 20. How, is that normal? She's got that going for him. Robin says she has to take Valium to deal with her nagging mother-in-law. Chad says he's sick of the whole setup and he's going to join the army. All right. I'm excited about this. On this Friday show, Bertice meets some of the most aggressive and outrageous paparazzi in the business. These guys will do anything to catch a celebrity posing candidly. You'll hear the story. Oscar winner Daniel Day-Lewis is now starring in the drama In the Name of the Father. It's the real-life story of Jerry Conlon, a man who was wrongly convicted of being an IRA terrorist and who served 14 years as a result of the sentence. The real Jerry Conlon was a recent guest on the Today Show. He talked about this amazing ordeal and all that he endured at the hands of the British police. Take a look at this. I was held naked. I, was, I had no sleep. There was guns produced. There was mock executions. There was police dogs barking and howling all the time. I was taken out. I was threatened with guns. So I think Jim's like a... They tried sort to of kill your father? Down. Well, they told me they were going to kill my mother. They took me to the top of Guilford Police Station and threatened to throw me out the window. Let's, let's go to a scene, um, not of the film, but a real-life scene. Um, the date for this one is October 19, 1989, and what had to be the most emotional day of your life. This is the day that you were released from prison and spoke to the press about At what you'd been trial, through. 14 years ago, he'd alleged police brutality and threats to his family unless he confessed to the bombings. I'm in prison 15 years for something I didn't do, for something I didn't know anything about. Totally innocent man, I watched my father die in a British prison for something he didn't do. He is innocent, the Maguires is innocent. Let's hope the what do you remember about that day, Jerry? Everything. Everything. I remember going to court. I remember the morning I woke up, they strip searched me before I left the cell to get breakfast. Then they took me back in, strip searched me again. And then when I went down to put on my civilian clothes, and even though they knew I was being released that day, they, they strip searched me again. I like today's show, Conlon. Conlon's father was also wrongly convicted. He died in prison in the movie Innocent Book bestseller on today's show this friday actor george hamilton talks about his latest projects two fathers and justice for the innocent and there's a lovely snapshot of george right now <laughs> he's a handsome man isn't he we're going to take what we call a break right now when we come back some smooching vacationers refuse to come up for air and a female rapist get on his body from sharon i don't know he already had cuts on his body so he was bleeding when he came into your your house We're back. Still looking at highlights of the talk show. Sharon is currently serving a 15-year sentence for rape. Sharon is her name. She claims she is totally innocent. And Tuesday on the Montel Williams show, she tried putting her male victim, Ronald, who you will see here in a moment, on the defensive. The fact is her story was sounding, I guess, pretty much fairly believable until the issue of a few incriminating knife wounds and slices on the neck came up. And then, Why did she do it to me? Why what? do you keep lying? You know it's a lie, Ronald. You know, you, they never found a gun. You had three or four different stories in court you made up. It was on TV, you lied. Five, six dis different stories in the newspaper. You just lied. You know we made love. And then afterwards, you want to jump up and scream, you got a wife. You're a liar. And I hope you pay for this. Okay, well now, me. you know, did you, did you know Ronald, Sharon? No, I did not. So the night he's just walking by your place and you just said, come on in and have sex? Oh, no. What happened? We, we went to the lake. It was me and some friends and him. He, he came up to us and asked, could he go to the lake with us? We went to the lake. We came back. He asked me some questions. Did I have a boyfriend? I said, no. He asked me how, how old I was. I told him. He asked me to make love. I said, yes, I might. And then he went walk to my room. We made love. And then he jumped up in a, in a state of shock says he's married. He where, where, did, where did he get the cuts? Where did he get the cuts on his body from, Sharon? I don't know. He already had cuts on his body. So he was bleeding when he came into your, your house? No, he wasn't bleeding. He didn't have no cut. They did not have no doctors um, saying that he'd been cut. 
They did not have any proof of nothing. Highlight of Montel, Sharon was convicted of sexual assault with a deadly weapon. Ronald says that they never actually made love. He was frankly too frightened to perform. Friday, Montel's going to hear from women who were raped by members of their own race and have become prejudiced against people of their own ethnic background, molested women who hate their own race. Friday, Montel Williams. What do we got here? Want to put some fire back in your marriage, Mark? Well, you're not married, but if you were, huh? You got 10 seconds on you? Author Alan Friedman says it's all the time it takes to rekindle the passion in your love life. For couples who have been spending time apart, she recommends a soulful 10-second re-get-acquainted kiss. We join the Shirley... Ooh. We join the Shirley Show on location in Jamaica for this warm and fuzzy highlight. Sure, it looks a little like an infomercial, but it's not. So what I have, and there are exercises throughout, is a 10-second kiss. Whenever you haven't seen each other for a long period of time, you are to wrap your arms around each other and give each other a 10-second 10 10 kiss. 10-second kiss. So right. for every couple that says, well, we don't have time to be romantic, I lo normally say, do you have 10 seconds? And I would love to use this wonderful audience for everybody who is with somebody to stand up and we're going to count down what 10 seconds is, because normally people do not know how long that is. All right, now wait, for those of us who are at home, back home, and we don't have our partner, use your hand. Use your Just hand. Just your hand. If you're Practice. not with somebody, everybody here is with. Practice. But, right. Just ten to feel right, 10 seconds. Right, stand up, everybody. Here we go. Here we go. Good. Good. All right. All, the All right. We'll do a countdown here. We'll do a countdown. All okay, right. Everybody on your mark. All right. On your mark, get set. Go. All right. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, that's great. Great. Okay. Now I got. Does that seem like a long time? Ten seconds? Huh? Why? What? That's a long ten seconds. Sir, you have no idea. Seemed like an eternity. I'm waiting for Dave Del Dotto to come out there and start selling us a little real estate, huh? Creedman is the author of two books, Lighter Fire and Light His Fire, the controversial Light Their Fire is yet to be published. On Friday's show, Shirley will invite three couples to renew their vows in what really is very, very scenic Jamaica, tropical weddings this Friday, three dream weddings in Jamaica. It was Tuesday on the Maury Povich show, and the topic was incest. A woman in the audience stood up and explained how she has been sexually abused by her brother. Although the audience seemed moved by her story, an attorney on Maury's panel thought she was overreacting. Take a look at this. I am a survivor. I was abused by my brother. Um, if his sister forgive, forgave him, why isn't she up there? Because I don't want her here. Because she's a child, and I don't want her to go through this knowing what he's going through now. I, I am don't also care a survivor. what he's going through. He could be dead in a grave, and I couldn't care less. I do not talk to my brother. I have not talked to him for three years. I'm not allowed to see his children. And my life is to live in hell. Because of what he did to you? Because of what he did to me. I was the age of six till I was 16, and I wasn't just molested. I was abused very badly and i'm sure you came from an absolutely perfect family which had no impact whatsoever on your current mental state well, what does that have to do with yeah, that? What is that it has something to do with it everyone no, it who has got an emotional disturbance everyone who's ill wants to blame 100 percent of their illness on the fact that they were molested a terrible thing happened to her get your life together how old are you now Satan went on to say that darkness rules and Thursday night he hopes to see everyone at the Unholy Army of the Dead meeting where the movie will once again be Devil's Reign starring Ernest Borgnine. On Maury's show this Friday, Mr. Blackwell unveils his latest list of the world's ten best dressed and, listen up Johnny, ten worst dressed people in America. Friday. We'll take a quick break and be back in a moment to raid the refrigerator. After that, it's cruising for... Male prostitutes. We've got the highlight of real personal after this. Like a 
Sheena Bolts from the gray and thundering sky. We're back with more talk soup than you could sink a spoon into. We've been having some problems with our ties today. This one seems to work okay, but I thought on a daily basis we'd start featuring what we're going to call the tie of the day. So ladies and gentlemen, sit back and enjoy what we've picked out from the wardrobe department for Wednesday as tie of the day. All right, well, Tom. What a model. What was that thing all about? It looks like it's, well. Tuesday, Real Personal featured members of the male prostitution profession. One of the guests was a 26-year-old who went by the name of Carl, who spoke with Bob Berkowitz and a caller about his chosen line of work. Let's, let's roll that clip. Carl, what have you learned about yourself? I'm curious about that. Um, I've learned that I am a good actor. I've learned that... Uh, is it acting? Sometimes it is. It's, it's knowing how, w what the client wants and responding appropriately. Right. Uh, whether they want me to be shy or aggressive or passive. or It's learning to kind of just tune into that as soon as you meet them, making quick judgments. Carl, is it your experience that mostly you're the receiver or the giver of pleasure in your uh, relationship with your client? More often, the receiver. Why do you think that is? Uh, I, it's their fantasy they're living out. It seems to me that, uh, especially when you come to married men and such, they seem to want to touch me and experience me, rather than it be the other way around. See, highlight a real personal there a little bit later on. The man in silhouette, Carl, as it were, went on to add a couple of other comments. We one time I had an apple on my head while Tom and the crew threw sharp knives at me, and I was seriously injured in that. Another time we were forced to pull a sleigh down Hollywood Boulevard. And... Oh, oh, my God! God! John! Is that John? It looked familiar. Friday on Real Personal, Bob and his guests will try to help people put more zip in their love lives. Earlier this week, Vicki Lawrence wrapped her thighs in saran wrap in order to lose a little weight. It was worth a shot, I guess, but she wasn't crazy about the results. So it's time to call in the heavy artillery now. Here's Olympic gymnast Mary Lou Retton explaining how Vicki can get in shape by learning to stand on her head. You want me to teach you something? I don't know. <laughs> Let me see what, what, what I can... What could an old person do? Clip. Okay, well, let's see about how that goes. <laughs> or we can do... Um... Steve, you're cute, but you're such a little smart ass. Can you do a cartwheel? Can you do a cartwheel? No, I can't do cartwheels. I can't do... I can't even do the little triangular headstand. You know, like you're supposed to... You want me to spot you on that? Can you do that? Can yes. You? I can't do it. Okay, we want to... I never could do any of this stuff. <laughs> okay, okay, I want you to... You're supposed to put your hands in a little triangle like this. Do you want me to do it for you first? I don't put my hands like that, but I just kick up like this. <laughs> yeah, I can push up. But, so. Come on, Vicky. Okay. Come on, Vicky. <laughs> she can do it. There you have it, the highlight of Vicki Lawrence show. Later on, little Mary Lou, who, who is all but two. She's only four feet tall, I guess, but a little later on, she did a triple, quadruple, half pint with a gainer. Whoa, judges, please. Well, there you have it. This Friday show, Vicki reunites some laughing cast members, folks like Joanne Warlett, Alan Sues, and Gary Owens. Can I hear a rousing socket to me? We'll take a quick break and be back in just a moment with the real life saga of a topless mother. It's coming up here next.
Sitting in for John Madden, Greg Kinnear back with you. Kids, kids, how soon they forget when Fatima was a little baby sitting on her mama's knee, she would happily nurse away without a care in the world. Back then, her mother's topless body was a symbol of nurturing and security. But these days, Fatima, or Fatima if you prefer, is very opinionated about when and where her mother can bear her breasts. She and, oh boy, Kina, Kiana, something like that, the daughter of another sexpot mom or recent guests on the Richard Bay Show. Maritza, Maritza, your job, I guess, is to some degree using your sexuality when you're a go-go dancer yes, to, you know, to get guys to give out tips and whatever, you know? Yes. But when you go to the beach and you're with your daughter and you're walking around topless like In a G-string. In a G-string. I wasn't topless. I, I was not topless. I went into the beach in the water with the top on and, of course, a G-string. Ma, you have to feel the breeze. You... No, I didn't. So the way you didn't realize that your top was off? No, it must have happened so fast, I didn't feel it. That was a highlight of Richard Bay. Wasn't that fun? On Friday's show, Richard Pitts waves against Bucks and Babes. It's sexual exploitation at its finest, right? And now, we'll leave you with some dancing over credits. See you tomorrow. <laughs>